Have you guys heard about NFTs? They're the hip new thing that all the rich kids are buying. It stands for a non-fungible token. And like many of the new technologies that have come out utilizing blockchain, it kind of has a little bit of an abstract function. There's a few different things that you could use it for, uh, but basically a non-fungible token allows you to create a unique digital ownership that's easy to verify and digital scarcity. Uh, because of course scarcity is one of the main things that makes an item be worth a whole lot of money even in if it's a digital item uh, take the party hats in runescape for example they came out back in december of 2001 and they were basically worthless at the time you could get them for free but then there was all of a sudden a limited number of them after the christmas event happened you couldn't really get them except for trading with the player and the price of them started increasing to millions of in-game currency by the end of 2002. Or you know, for the Zoomers out there, you can think of it like the Supreme brand, uh, where everything is more expensive because it's exclusive. They only make a certain amount of whatever with the word Supreme written on it, uh, so that's supposed to give it value. Like if we take the Supreme brick, for example, these actually originally sold from Supreme for $30, which if you didn't know is about 100 times the normal cost of a typical red clay brick. And now resellers are offering it up for $250 or more. Uh, at least that's the lowest asking price that they have right now for it. This last sold for $240, and that's 10% more than what it sold for before that. In fact, if we take a look at all of the sales data for the Supreme Brick, we can see that it's appreciating in value faster than the S&P 500. So there you go, you should cancel all of your portfolios and all of your investments and just put all your money in the Supreme Brick if you really wanna make money. Now, NFTs have a very distinct advantage over hype gear like uh, you know the Supreme stuff or Yeezys or any of those other brands that are just really expensive because they're exclusive. Uh, because while they both have really high prices due to scarcity, there really isn't a whole lot that's keeping somebody from making a counterfeit. Like if, with the Supreme brick, for example, okay, humans have literally been making bricks for thousands of years. Uh, it's really not rocket science to make a brick and logos are pretty easy to recreate as well. So it's no surprise that you can find people selling fake versions of the Supreme Brick like this one here on this random Asian website. Um, they're selling for 68 yen. That's about 62 cents in US dollars. So yeah, obviously much cheaper. Um, you know, whoever's selling this is probably making a profit as well off of the brick. Uh, this is also why you see certain things like the fake versions of Yeezys, right? So those are pretty hard to tell. Like there's even sneaker experts that look at them and it takes them a few minutes to identify a good fake, like a good knockoff from the real ones. Um, if you compare this to like fake Nikes, for example, it's a lot easier, right? Like if someone just has regular fake Nikes, it's usually able to tell. And the reason why is a real pair of Yeezys, they can sell for as much as a thousand dollars. So you could easily spend like $300 trying to make a fake pair, which is already going to be like a hundred times what it would normally cost to make uh, a Nike or Adidas or something similar to that type of shoe, you can pay a lot more money to make a fake pair. And obviously if you put more money into a fake, then it's going to look closer to the authentic thing. Luckily with NFTs, there's no way to create a fake or a reprint or duplicate of any time and trick people into thinking that it's the original, at least not anybody that knows how to look at the blockchain. But oftentimes there's also nothing that's stopping anybody from just getting the content from your NFT for free. Um, so most of the content that's commonly traded as NFTs these days, if you haven't noticed, is art, uh, digital art. In fact, I have a couple of NFTs that I've downloaded, which I'm going to show you for free, but keep in mind, people actually paid money for these. So we have like this CryptoPunk right here. Okay, so this is like, um, uh, apparently it's a character in a game. There's there's this game called CryptoPunks where each of them you get a unique character 
Uh, and all of them are unique, okay? So none of, none of these are going to be the same. They're all gonna be cryptographically unique. So this is a CryptoPunk character, Punk uh, 2890, which was bought for 605 Ethereum, or 761, almost $762,000 at the time. Um, so yeah, this <laughs> nice pixel art right here, uh, three quarters, over three quarters of a million dollars. But yeah, you can just save image as and boom. Now you have the same thing that somebody paid that much money for. So let's take a look at this one next. So this was a collection that sold for I think a little bit over a million dollars. It's like 16 uh, paintings or I guess digital pictures in total. Uh, and these are also created by Justin Roiland, who is, um, I think he's, had, yeah, he's got his credentials right here. So he's co-creator of Adult Swim's Rick and Morty. And he's also the founder and CEO of Squanch Games. So sure, some of you guys know who that is. Uh, so yeah, you've got, <laughs> This, it's basically a tree. So this seems a little reasonable, right? $10 for this. I mean, it, it, again, it's a digital picture, so I don't know, like, I would I would pay $10 for real art. I mean, not this, <laughs> but I would pay $10 for a picture and hang it up. Uh, but then you got this $100 one, which um, again, like basically same kind of art style. Uh, I don't know if I would personally buy this for $100, probably not. I mean, I, I really wouldn't buy any of them since they're digital. Uh, but yeah, then you've got this one, Roaring Twenties. So $1,000, starting to get a little expensive now. Um, then like some of these ones. And then uh, this is the weird thing. So all the ones with like weird like titties or udders on them, those are the ones that sell for a whole lot of money. Uh, and then also this one, The Girl, which is just like, I don't even really know what's going on in here. But yeah, so you got this whole collection, which uh, sold for a lot. But I got one more for you. So this one sold for uh, $6.6 .6 million. And I have it downloaded to my hard drive because, you know, it's, uh, it's worth a lot of money. So get ready for this display of fine art. Uh, and I should probably make myself a little bit smaller so that you guys can see. All right, so it's like a 10 second video clip. go so you basically have like trump's corpse uh i guess spray painted on i don't know maybe these are supposed to be tattoos like some of them i don't know maga like some of them seem like they're pro trump and anti-trump uh then you've got this bird that flies in and just yells a clown emoji out into the air so i don't know what that's supposed to mean Maybe the clown's call, I mean, maybe the uh, bird's calling Trump a clown. Maybe he's calling the dude that paid $6.6 .6 million a clown. Maybe he's just like having his perspective on our reality, what our world has become. He thinks, this bird thinks that we're a bunch of clowns. So you're probably wondering at this point, uh, what even is the point of NFTs? Okay, what am I buying, right? If anybody can just download it for free, why am I paying millions and millions of dollars for an NFT? Um, basically what it is, is you're paying for the exclusive right, not even to own it, because again, anyone could download it. You're paying for the exclusive right to say that you own it. And that ownership can be verified on the blockchain. Um, now there's another thing that I think NFTs are being used for because, um, there's a lot of similarities between these NFTs and um, fine art, right? Like if we go to the marketplace and if we just sort by highest price, this is hilarious, right? Some of these pay f <laughs> are more than the total collective output of the entire world, right? Like let me uh, move this so you can see all those zeros <laughs> that are being offered up for it. Um, but here's what I think is going on. I think that there is a, a similarity to what goes on with modern art and fine art, which is that I think a lot of people might be trying to use this for money laundering. You know, with modern art, that's the reason why a lot of the times you'll just get a painting that looks like it's a unicorn that vomited up on the canvas, something that uh, most people would probably think has no artistic value, even though I know I, art, I guess, isn't objective or whatever. 
Um, but it will sell for millions and millions of dollars. And then you'll get somebody who made a bunch of money illegally, maybe selling drugs or kinder eggs, you know, whatever illegal commodity it is that people want. Um, so now I have a bunch of money from my uh, kinder egg cartel, and now I need to make this money somehow seem legitimate, right? Because I didn't get it from legitimate means. So I'll give that money to one of my associates, who will then go buy one of those paintings that looks like a clown getting hit by a truck. And at the art auction place, they don't really care where the money came from. They don't care if you're paying in cash. Everything is A-OK -okay there. So now I have a painting that is worth a lot, we'll say $30 million, uh, which is also, it's pretty difficult to store $30 million in such a small size, right? Even if you went and you bought like gold or platinum, that would still be a pretty large amount of the metal, but now instead you have it in a small painting. Uh, so yeah, I have that. And then I'll go sell it to some hipster that I guess would actually want to pay that much money for the art. Maybe someone who like invented avocado lattes and boom, now I have $30 million obtained legitimately. So yeah, a lot of the modern art scene is really just a front for laundering money. And that's kind of the same vibe that I'm getting from some of this NFT art. Uh, now, NFTs are built on top of currently existing blockchains and most of which are not anonymous, right? So the, the vast majority of NFTs are built on top of the Ethereum network, which is absolutely not an anonymous blockchain. So hopefully uh, the people that aren't people that are trying to use NFTs to money launder don't actually do that because it's not going to work. It's going to be very obvious what you're doing. Uh, it's going to be a lot like the people that try to buy Bitcoin off of Coinbase and then use it to go onto the dark web and hire a hitman to kill their wife. All that's going to happen is the police just show up to your door because it's very obvious what you went and did. Uh, but anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video with anybody who's interested in using NFTs to launder money, uh, or you could just tell them that it's not a good idea. And let me know what you think about NFTs or NFTs. NFT art in the comments below.